Hi, Gary Stearman. Time once again for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. This one being made for broadcast on the 12th of October, a Friday. And once again with us in studio, author and lecturer Douglas Stoffer. Stoffer. I did it. That's okay. <laughs> I don't mind a bit. They'll remember it now. The now Stoffer offer at the sure. end, too. Let me say it correctly. Douglas Stoffer. And uh, <clears throat> it's spelled S T. A-U-F-F-E-R, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But, Doug, welcome to Prophecy in the News once again. Oh, it's great to be here. And let's, let's, uh, let's talk about your book, Freedom's Ring. You've got a chapter in here that has a title that I just, uh, I just love. 13 Steps to Losing Your Salvation, which, by the way, just happens to be thir chapter 13 in his book. Uh, a provocative chapter title, if ever there was one. It is, and it has been. Uh, some people will read just the chapter title and they'll call me say, well, you, you believe you can lose your salvation. And I say, well, that's why it's chapter 13. That's why there's 13 uh -huh. of them because you can't. But when you start reading some of the, some of the subheadings, you know, like what would you have to do to lose your salvation? Well, you'd have to declare the grace of God insufficient. Uh, number two, find the faith of Jesus Christ faulty. Number three, get Christ to take back his righteousness. Number four, uh, let's see, three was long, have the pardon removed from your sin. So when you start looking at these, these are things that you can't do, it can't happen, but it's like the opposite way of looking at the gospel. Were you pardoned? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to lose your salvation, God would have to take back his pardon. Well, you know, uh, that sort of reminds me right offhand of Romans chapter 8. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. In other words, what has been done, you're saying, cannot be undone. No. Neither height nor depth nor any other creature can separate you from the love of God. So your chapter 13 is, is simply a, a method of proving that point. Absolutely. And... And, you know, there are people that would say, well, you know, why do you do it that way? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a writing technique. And when you start looking at how to convey the truth, mm -hmm. there are many different ways to do it. I mean, think about it. Somebody says, well, I want to know, the, I want to know how I can lose my salvation. And they start reading it with doubts, thinking that maybe they could. They start reading it and they start realizing, well, that can't happen. I mean, here's another one. Um, break the Father, seal the Holy Spirit. You're sealed until the day of redemption. That's right. Well, they'll look at that and go, well, you can't do that. Can't do that. And they start realizing that, look, this is, this is written in such a way, when you look at it, it cannot happen. Change the meaning of everlasting. <laughs> Who's going to do that? And that's just number seven. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, reverse your, your birth into the family of God. You have to reverse your birth. Now you're no longer, you're birthed into it. How do you get unborn? Things like that. So... You know, it's just a way of uh, getting people to think about the gospel in a different way, making them consider that, look, this thing about eternal security, everlasting life, and the blessedness and the peace that you can have from knowing you're saved can never be undone. You know, I think a lot of people uh, are worried, essentially. And in fact, this, this world sort of teaches you to worry. And and people worry, you know, what if I do something that really displeases God and he withdraws himself from me, you know, and, and they'll say, well, I don't think my salvation is secure. And they get themselves wound into this type of thinking. But really, if you study the word of God, it'll remove that way of thinking from you. And I, I see that in your book, by the way. I see that message uh, definitely written in your book. Assurance of salvation is a huge topic. It is. It is. Um, I'll tell you another anecdote. I was preaching um, last Sunday in Florida, <clears throat> and I was preaching from the book of Ephesians, and my daughter and my wife were there. And the pastor was going, all his family had just left. Um, they're, now, they're now on the road, and he was there alone. I mean, he was mm -hmm. just really struggling with it. And so I went through Ephesians, <clears throat> and I showed... Um, one, I went down to one verse toward the end of the message, and I said, we're trophies to God's grace. And here's the verse. Ephesians 2, 7 says that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. 
So what that verse says is that in the ages to come, God's going to show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us. So in heaven, I'm going to be up there and God's going to be able to point at me and say, Doug Stauffer's there because of the exceeding riches of my grace. That's an amazing thing to me. So you become kind of an exhibit if, 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 to, to, his, to his grace. That's a great idea. I like that. Right. My daughter, when we got home, wrote a song about it. And she said, I wrote this song and you inspired me. Really? And I read the song. I, you know, I, I'm not an emotional person as far as just emotion. But I'm going to tell you what, that about ripped my heart out. And she named it Trophies to His Grace. Mm, that's wonderful. The name of the book is Freedom's Ring. Uh, if you want to get fired up about delivering the gospel, and if you want to uh, develop a, a set of, uh, of effective ways to think about the gospel, this is the book for you. Uh, let's spend a little bit of time talking about the heavyweight. 888 pages, one book, one authority. Why did you write this book? Well, I really wrote it for the... 400th anniversary of the King James Bible, which was in 2011. Mm -hmm. It didn't come out till 2012. I was on the road so much in 2011. I mean, I don't yeah. know, 45 weeks I think I was on the road. And I just couldn't get it done. Well, I started in January, really focused on it, and decided I would write, 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 and only travel minimally until I got the book done. Then I looked at it and said, boy, it's a big book. And I wanted to break it in half. People kept saying, you got to break it in half. It's, it's so big. And so I got to looking at it and I said, no. I said, this book has many features in it that I can't pull out. Mm -hmm. It has a history of the church, a history of the Bible. It has a history of King James, who he was, the fact that he was mm -hmm. a Christian king. People have no idea. They don't know about Weldon, Anthony Weldon, Sir Anthony Weldon, who uh, hated him for who he was. Uh, he was a Scotsman, King James was, and Weldon was demoted, and he said, I'll get my revenge. So 25 years after King James died, his King James son was put to death, and Weldon came out with the uh, story that King James was a homosexual. All that's not true. Then I have a, uh, three chapters or two chapters on the King James translators, who they were, what their qualifications were, and it's an amazing thing to look at. I've got a Bible dictionary in the book. It just goes on and on and on because mm -hmm. I wanted somebody to be able to pick up this book and say, you know what, I can use this for reference, or I can read it, because mm -hmm. it's also an easy read, like you said. I don't write to try to impress people, because I think that's depressing. Yeah, and I noticed that. It, I recognize that immediately, and, and I like a book that gives you facts quickly. You don't have to wade through a lot of verbiage. And that's the way you write. Let's go back to the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible, uh, 1611 to 2011. Uh, I recall the National Geographic uh, put a big spread, a lot of publicity on the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. They, they didn't exactly do it justice. And you comment on that in One Book, One Authority. I do. My dad sent me the article or he told me about the article. And he said, you need to look this up. So I looked it up and I was just, I was upset. My dad read that. I don't know if he thought there was credibility in it, but it, it was so skewed. So I went in there and I analyzed it and, and tore it apart, so to speak. Or no, I literally tore it apart. <laughs> and then um, I went in there and I started studying who, I found out who is behind Nat Geo, and it's Rupert Murdoch. Well, in a previous program, we talked about Rupert Murdoch and who he was and what he owns. He, he owns uh, Zondervan. He owns Thomas Nelson Publishers. Or maybe we didn't do this, but he owns also Avon Publishers. Avon Publishers publishes the Satanic Bible. Wow. So the same guy mm. that publishes the Satanic Bible publishes the majority of the modern versions on the market. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, if I was a person out there listening to this program and I knew that my modern version was being published by the same guy that publishes the Satanic Bible... I would look at it and say, I got a problem, and I need to do something about it. And that's why I wrote this book, so that people can have the information that they need to find that out. And it is, I must say, it is complete. <clears throat> it is authoritative uh, on its own. You'll find tidbits in here. I guarantee you, you won't find anywhere else. One book, one authority. 
a yours for $34.95. <clears throat> this book, uh, Freedom's Ring, $29.95. Together they would be $65, but if you ask for the Stoffer offer, which we're calling it because it kind of sticks in your mind, uh, together these two books, $49.95, and I guarantee you, you will get a good, good read. It, you're going to be uh, educated in in the way that it counts, educated in the authority of the gospel, the authority of the Bible, and as you have figured out by now, the authority of the King James Bible, which he highly recommends for many, many reasons, which you'll find in one book, one authority. Doug, any other uh, final words you'd like to leave us with? I would just say prophecy in the news needs to continue, continue, continue. So keep up the great work, and I'll be tuning in. And we'll have you back one of these days and talk about another book or whatever you're doing at the time. Doug Stauffer, a man with a heart for the gospel, and uh, pray for him and his, for his work, even as you pray for us at Prophecy in the News, that the word might continue to go forth in these last days. Very important to get the word of the Bible out there. And by the way, read Prophecy. Things are happening very quickly. Gary Stearman reminding you to keep looking up.